Yeah, yeah. Looking at my watch and say it's time to get it, yeah. Talking about my guidance every day. I'm... Yo, yo, yo. What's going on, good peoples? How y'all doing this morning? It's Alonzo Avents. Zoe Avents. Soul Service. Uh, part of Soul Ministry, man. And, uh... Hey, well, we're about the Word of God. We're about reading the Word of God, growing in His Spirit, learning more about His ways, conforming to His ways so we can grow and be the light on the hill, the salt of the earth like we're supposed to be. As you can see, I'm, uh, I'm relaxing right now. Uh, it's one of my last days in Mexico. We came down to Playa del Carmen for a week, actually, for a conference, and the conference has been amazing. Um, man, if you, if you only knew, if you only knew, I'm not finna sit here and tell y'all about my vacation status. Uh, what we hear about is the word. So we're in Matthew 26, we in verses 13, no, excuse me, 14 through verses 25. Heavenly Father, holy is your name. And may your will be done. Thank you for this time today to spend in your word. Thank you for your spirit, Heavenly Father. I pray that you can keep me focused, keep me honed in on your word, in tune with your spirit, not just now, but forever. May your people hear your voice, Father, not my own, but yours. Use me as your tool to speak to the souls that need your voice. May your sheep hear your voice and heed it and behave accordingly, Father. Be with us this morning. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, people. So, like I said, Matthew 4, 26, 14 through 25, we'll start off in verse uh, 14. And again, I'm holding the camera, man, so I hey, just had to get over it, huh? Verse 14, Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priests and said unto them, What will ye give me, and I will deliver him unto you? And they covenanted with him for thirty pieces of silver. And from that time, he sought opportunity to betray him. All right, so this is Jesus, right? He already told him he was going up to be betrayed. He had to be delivered to the Gentiles. And this is in order for him to be crucified on the cross dead right risen on the third day so that we could be saved so we could be washed in the blood now notice the uh the one who betrayed him we all know who he is because we all we're all astutian right but this is judas iscariot he went to the chief priest and he made a covenant with them to betray jesus for 30 pieces of silver now i didn't do the exact math i did but i forgot what it was to be honest but it's not a lot of money 30 pieces of silver at you know a couple like a week and a half two weeks ago based on the spot price and what the piece of silver was then i believe it was a shekel it was like seven grand roughly give or take you know 500 to a thousand dollars so judas iscariot is betraying the messiah yahashua for about seven thousand dollars now think about that right we can get a lot from that. All right, so we'll start here. Money, for one. It's temporary. It's temporary. $7,000 isn't going to change anybody's life. And I can be real. I've been in a place in my life where I thought it might have. You know? I thought, hey, if I had seven grand, I could do this. I could do X, Y, Z, right? But the reality is it ain't going to last Forever. It ain't gonna last no time at all. Even 50, 60, 100, 150. Money is temporary, man. And think about Ecclesiastes. Think about Proverbs. Think about what Solomon taught. Solomon talked about how all with all he had, all the money, all the women, the kingdom, everything he had, he said it was all vanity, right? In Ecclesiastes, this was the wisest man that I ever knew. That as far as the Bible go, this man asked for wisdom, and as far as I know, he was the wisest man ever. He said it was all vanity, right? Now, of course, if you broke, it's hard to receive that. I'm gonna just be honest. If you ain't got a lot of money, right, and somebody that's a multimillionaire, somebody that's you know got way more money than you got, tells you that hey, money ain't all it's cracked up to be. It's temporary. You ain't gonna hear it. You ain't gonna receive it. And it tells us that too. Proverbs tells us that too. Right, he said, but the poor here is not rebuked, so it's temporary. Jud Judas is carried wasn't he didn't he didn't understand this concept, but of course it had to happen. It was of the spirit. Jesus had to be sacrificed. So while we can learn um, from his 
his mistake, right? What his train of thought was, we still got to understand that it was also a part of God's will, which is also on a, a, a bigger scheme of things because God is sovereign, right? He hardened, he hardened Pharaoh's heart. Um, well, people will do anything for money, right? They'll lie, they'll steal, they'll kill, um, stab people in the back just for that temporary fix. It's like a drug, you know, just for that, that one thing they've been trying to do. And when you think about it, anything that you've sought, right? When I think about it, any like new car I wanted, any even a house or whatever material the case is, when you get it, it's exciting, the desire is fulfilled and it feels great. And then after a period of time, it goes away, it's done. You know, it's temporary. And then it's right back to who you are as a person, who you are at your core and who God called you to be, right? But again, temporary money. Judas betrayed Jesus, roughly seven grand. And we can see how temporary it was because after Jesus was crucified, what did G uh, Judas do? He went and hung himself, right? He was so overwhelmed with grief that he, he hung himself. And Jesus actually taught, right? that offenses must come. Stumbling blocks, they have to come. But he said, woe unto the man who wished they come through. So this thing had to happen. This offense against Jesus had to happen in order for the fulfillment of prophecy and for us to be given for our sins. So, hey, I praise God for being part of his design. And on the real, thank you, Judas, for doing what you were supposed to do. You did exactly what you were supposed to do and you helped save me. So I appreciate it, right? Through Jesus Christ. But also it says, woe unto him who these offenses come. So woe unto Pharaoh whose heart was hardened, woe unto Judas who had to betray Jesus, right? Again, these things had to come and God said what? Some were created for destruction. It's not for us to question that, it's for us to understand it and know it. So when we're in these predicaments and these situations and we're being portrayed because of a couple of dollars, you know, five grand, 10 grand, 20, whatever, that, whatever the amount is, $20, $30, $50, we gotta understand that it must come. It must come. Now, people ain't giving us up to be crucified, to be murdered, to be sacrificed. So this ain't on that extreme as Jesus, but we got to understand these things must happen. It's a part of our growth, right? All right, so I'm going to get off that. Now, next verse, 17. Now, the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare thee to eat the Passover? And he said, Go into the city to such a man and say unto him, the master saith, my time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them and they made ready the Passover. Now, this man wasn't named. I don't know if Jesus told the disciples his name like in the first place or if they already knew who he was. But when you read through scripture, there's a few places where, okay, what we understand is that the multitude was following Jesus and getting his teaching, sitting at his feet. We also understand that he had 12 disciples that traveled with him who were close to him. But we start to see other people pop up or be mentioned that may or may not be named. For example, the gentleman that came and got retrieved Jesus' body, right? Or came to retrieve Jesus' body, which was one of his disciples. Um, yeah, so we see... We see these people, this man, pop up in scripture that um, the place of scripture says whose name is basically his name was insignificant, right? But he said, going to the city to such a man, he didn't say the man's name, he said to such a man. So, hey, this is the spirit led thing and tell him that the master said, my time is at hand. So apparently this man, right, knew exactly what was supposed to be going on. It was a spirit moving, y'all. We got to understand these things. It was a spirit moving. Maybe a messenger, an angel of the Lord was on this man or being used at this time. But he said, go to this man and tell him my time is at hand. I'm going to hold a Passover at your house, right? So the disciples did exactly what they were said, what was told to them. And they went and they got ready for the Passover. All right. Now, when the evening was come, he sat down with the twelve. And as they did eat, he said, verily, I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. And they were exceeding sorrowful and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. The Son of Man goeth that it is, as it is written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? He said unto them, Thou hast said, Right. 
So Jesus knew exactly who was gonna betray him. He wasn't naming, he won't name it no names. <laughs> he kept it G. <laughs> All the way up until they asked him. And they asked him, Judas asked him, is it I? He said the same, well Jesus told him, the same who dipped his hand in, with me in bread, the same is the one that betray me. And Judas said, is it I? And he said, Jesus said, you have said it. Thou hast said it. I ain't say it, you said it, Judas, is you. Yep, for sure. So, one went to, Going to the man who offenses must come. Um, come up off these money things, man. If 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 money has uh, been on your heart, been part of your desires, the love of money, I shall say, then it's one heck of a stumbling block. And that is why I believe Yahashua talked about it so much. And why he said you can't serve two masters, right? You can serve God or you can serve mammon. Where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. Judas's treasure, right, was in money. So his heart couldn't be with serving the Most High God. It couldn't be serving Jesus because his heart was about money. All right, so we got it. That is a huge problem in today's society because our society is based around money. We're in a capitalistic society. Right, wrong, and different, I don't know. I can just say what is. And I can say that we got to overcome that. I had to overcome that. Right, and it's an ongoing thing. It's something that we gotta constantly check our hearts on and check ourselves on. So, if that's you, or if you have the inclination that it even might be you, then you gotta make sure you get right with God. Get your soul right with God, because at the end of the day, we don't want to be the one that betrayed the most high, the most high God. We don't want to betray the Son because of a few dollars, seven grand, ten grand, twenty grand, fifty grand, a hundred grand. What amount of money is worth your soul? What amount of money is worth your salvation? None of it. It's temporary. The only thing that is forever, that is long-lasting, is your soul. So, right? He who gives his life for Christ's sake shall have it, right? And he who lose it, find his life, excuse me, he who finds his life shall lose it. And he who gives his life for the sake of Christ shall, shall find it, right? So we got to be willing to... to to lose it all, give it give it all away, give those desires away for the sake of your husband, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Alright? Heavenly Father, holy is your name. And may your will be done. I pray your people have heard your voice. I pray the spirit of man is conquered, Father, in the hearts of your people through your word. May your people truly hear your voice and heed your word, Father. And may they understand that just like the lilies of the field and the fowls of the air, that you got us. Just like you always told us you have and you always have. Everything that we've gone through, Father, you brought us through. We're still standing. We're here today. So we thank you for your people overcome, overcoming. Because we are more than conquerors and we are called in your name, Father. So thank you for delivering your people. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Hi, right, fam. I know y'all tired of seeing this camera jiggle and shake. Anyway, much love. Y'all go in peace. One.